What's up, AME394? <laughs> my name is Scott Perry, and this is my first touch designer tutorial, so I really hope it goes smoothly. Um, in this example, we are going to learn how to take a simple ramp top, transform some of that signal into chops, and direct those out a DMX out to some industry standard LED lights. Um, Full disclaimer, this is not the best way to do this, but it's an example to show some people new to touch, touch designer how to go between different operators. Uh, in this case, we'll be going from tops to chops back and forth. So buckle up, and we're going to start with a brand new container. We'll go inside, and once again, we're going to lay down a brand new container. In this case, it is going to be our ramp. We're going to make this ramp a 2D space similar to the way we would lay out lights at a wedding. A lot of times our work takes us to weddings where we are doing some fancy uplighting for clients. And it's cool to have dynamic lighting changes besides just flipping switches or matching their color scheme. We, with some interesting um, filters on information, we can do some cool twinkle effects, uh, chases, all sorts of awesome stuff. But for now, we're going to use simple... Um, chases in this case it's going to be a room that is for every three units wide four units high inside we're going to lay down a simple ramp i like to make mine horizontal we're going to start with just a red and blue color scheme and we're going to put some black in between it because it's going to be easier to see how our colors are going through our um, system if there's some black spaces in between. So that was kind of fast, but it's a simple ramp. You guys know how that stuff works. Now, we are going to be animating our ramp by changing the phase like this. So in this case, we're going to just keep a steady um, rate based on the seconds of the um, timeline. So there you have it, abs time dot seconds, uh, tried and true method for keeping uh, ramps moving since as long as I can remember. This is kind of fast, so we'll bump it down to three, keep it easy on the eyes. As always, we're gonna tie a null till the end of this ramp because you never know when you'll be changing the ramp you've assigned to this null. In this case, like we said before, we are going to have a circular, or sorry, not a circular, a uh, rectangular room. To make this robust, we are going to reference the parent um, to this operator. In this case, we'll use the Python um, string op. Uh, I always mess this up. I don't know what I'm doing with this stuff, how to say it properly, but op uh, bracket parenthesis quote, bracket, bracket, you get it. Um, that's the parent, dot par, dot width. That was a mouthful for something that easy. Do it again for the one below it, except we want the height. Boom, look at that. Tough to say, easy to do. So now you've got the ramp that is um, taking its resolution from its parent, We'll say, okay, back to here, we want to see what's inside of it. So we'll go to look, background, top, null one, looking inside of it. Dot slash goes in, dot dot slash goes up. There you have it. So now that we've got that ramp figured out for the moment, we are going to drop in another container, and that will hold all of our fixtures. This method is going to use a table dat that's going to reference the XY position of all of your fixtures. Um, so in this case, we'll just start off with a two column table, one with X axis parameters and one with Y axis parameters. We'll say that we want to have eight lights, so that means that we need nine columns. 
arbitrarily, we're just going to throw in some numbers here. I like to make a V for some of these patterns just so that you can recognize what's happening easily. You can make these whatever you like as long as it's between 0 and 1. And as always, tie it to a null. Great. So there's our table with arbitrary fixtures. We're going to call this null ramp locale. Actually, null ramp position. From there, we are going to do another container. Containers inside of containers and inside of containers. This is going to be our base fixture, which we use a replicator for. In this case, the first thing we're going to do is use a top two chop. Lay it down. And we're going to split this view because we need to go back to the ramps. So using uh, the menu up here, we'll go to container one, ramp. We see this null here. We're going to drag it over to the top two, chop. Put it in there with relative path. And there you have it. The rows um, values of R, G, and B, and A. We won't be using A for this because R, G, B, A for LED fixtures usually means amber, not alpha. This makes it so much easier for a three channel or a seven channel light, something like that, which many people have. All right, so now we're looking at a cropped row, but we actually want individual pixels. Looking a little bit better now. So over on this left hand column, we're going to go back to our fixtures table and we're going to look at this table here for its U and V values. So we're going to do a little scripting like this. We're going to look for the operator that is up a level called null ramp position. We are going to be looking in the row featured in the digits of, it, of this parent. So it's me.parent.digits followed by the column zero. And there you have it. We are looking for this table cell right here, up a level. Null ramp positions, the digits of the parent container, one in this case, and the column zero. That gets our U value. For the V, we're going to do the same thing, except we want to look in column one. And now, again, column one. So with this, we're going to take a look and see right now with a chop to top. Again, going from chop operator over to a top. RGB data format. And there we have it. The individual pixel in this ramp right here that is at 1, 2 is red blue right here one two with these values zero zero is always always in the lower left of the top so we know that uh, we're gonna send this out to emerge eventually this is just the very first light in fact it's barely even a light it's just the template that we're going to be using because right now we're going to go up back to our fixture container. We're going to drop in a replicator right here. The table dat for the replicator is going to go right in here. And the master operator is our container right here. Boom. 
Now it has made an instance of this container for every row minus the first because ignore first row when the replicator is on. So now we have eight fixtures, one through eight. Uh, to make this look easier, I like to lay these out vertically so we can have all of these fixtures. Okay, one more thing that I want to do, like we did with the ramp um, container, we're going to take this background top. Uh, we'll go back inside here. We're going to put a null on here. Same thing we did before with the look. I just went up a level. Um, dot slash null one. And when we re-replicate these, they will all have the values that we're looking for. Now we want to merge. This will go straight into the merge. Now, as you see here, we have all unit values. And for DMX lights, we need these to be in um, values of 255. So we're going to change the range. We're going to insert a math and change the two range to 255. Now, if we put a DMX out chop down, We will be able to send these out through an NTech device or something similar. I don't have one hooked up right now, so I'm getting an error code. But you can imagine if I had it hooked up, there would be lights going red and blue all up in this place. And there you have it. That is the very, 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 very basics of how to get some lights functional with a ramp. You can see here that they are going in order on my V. If I go into this ramp and let's say I want to lay down a transform top. I can go in here, rotate this 90 degrees, and we'll scale it up a little bit so we get more color. But Now you have the colors going from top to bottom, like a V. Very cool. Um, one code that um, I didn't lo know about for a little while and then came to my life and now I can't live without it is um, how you would connect uh, so what, so these operators together if you were going to change the number of fixtures. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the replicator one callbacks and we're going to drop in an extra callback. And what this means is that every time you re-replicate these um, containers, it is going to run this in a for loop just like you would use um, if you were going to use a for loop. There's plenty of opportunities. They all slip my mind right now. Um, so in this case, what we're going to do is say 4C in new ops. We'll say C dot output connectors of the zeroth variety connect to op merge one, close that down. I think that will do it. Oops, as I make the whole thing disappear. So now if we go in and we change it and we say, okay, we actually want to have more rows, 10 rows, and it automatically connects it. The only problem that we have now is that it doesn't have a home. So we'll say 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And there you have it. Now we're getting color on it as well. You can take that back off. No problem. Now we're just flying around the network for no good reason. And that's how you would add another light or take one off. The way that these signals go out to your lights are exactly how you would shoot to any DMX lights. Um, your first light, in this case, a three-channel light, is um, assigned here to the top of the merge. This is your second light, so we'd go address number 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, so on and so forth. If for some reason you had it labeled wrong, and you wanted to change the order of these fixtures, all you need to do is go in 
and reorder them until you have them right. But you would never mess up like that. So we'll just start over, recreate them. They connect in order. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of them in a row, perfectly heading out to here. If you wanted to change the colors of the lights, you can go back to your first ramp and um, fool around like that where now we have green and blue instead of red and blue. And you can get really creative really quickly. There you have it. That's my first tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. From here on out, we will be elaborating a little bit more into how this works, uh, how to get some dynamic looks. And um, I hope you can give me some tips on what you'd like to see me do better. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon.